dealing with the whole crisis, not just refugees. I'm Brian Lilly with TheRebel.media. I have to warn you, this is a tough story to talk about, a tough one to, to look at. It's impossible not to be moved in some way by the story of Alan Kurdi. He's the three-year-old boy whose body washed up on a Turkish beach this week. He was in a rowboat with his parents and older brother when it capsized. He drowned, so did his brother Galib and his mother Rehab. His father, Abdullah, survived and is now trying to pick up the pieces of a life that was already shattered before the drownings. The Kurdi family were fleeing the violence, the war that has gripped Syria, the civil war, the rise of ISIS and other fanatical groups. They were in a rowboat. And they were in a rowboat because they were trying to get to the Greek island of Kos. It's not far from Turkey and they hoped that if they got there then they could be refugees inside the European Union. They would be safe. Maybe they would even get to come to Canada. Abdullah has a sister in Vancouver, and there were stories since proven false that the sister, Fatima, had made an application to bring Abdullah and his family here, and it was, that application was denied. The government's been trounced and trampled for that. It, well, it turns out, as she herself said, she applied to bring her older brother, Mohammed, to Canada, not Abdullah. That fact and the reporting of it by Canadian media does not change the tragedy of Abdullah Kurdi and his family, or the thousands upon thousands of refugees fleeing death and destruction. My heart breaks for those people, but there is no magic wand, no easy solution. Of course, that didn't stop Canadian media outlets and politicians from using the story to attack Stephen Harper and the Conservatives, saying they lacked passion, they didn't care about this issue. I don't like to mix death and personal tragedy with politics, but it's already been done. Tom Mulcair, the NDP leader, actually said Canada is doing nothing for these people. This morning we see a little boy getting picked up on a beach. As a dad and a grandfather, it's just unbearable that we're doing nothing. Canada has an obligation to act, and it would be too easy this morning to start assigning blame. Doing nothing? You say you don't want to assign blame, but... You say Canada is doing nothing. Well, Mr. Mulcair, you would walk away from the mission to bomb ISIS, to support the Kurdish and Iraqi fighters taking the battle to them on the ground. And as for Syria, no one in Canada has yet called for us to take up arms on the ground in that country yet. We don't see a good guy in that fight. But if there was one, you and your party would actually say no to helping them militarily. You say this is a refugee crisis, but... Why do the refugees exist? They didn't just pop up out of nowhere. There's no famine in the region. They exist because of a civil war, because of ISIS. And you oppose Canada fighting ISIS. So, so by the way, does Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party. Trudeau said, in reaction to this story, that it proves Canada isn't the country it was. These particular little boys um, you know, should be right now preparing for the beginning of the school year in Vancouver uh, with their cousins. Uh, instead of reminding us all uh, that Canada um, over the past years has failed to be the country that we like to imagine it to be. No, Mr. Trudeau, your party is not the party that it was. Lester Pearson, the former prime minister and liberal hero, often cited for starting peacekeeping, knew that there had to be a peace to keep. He also knew that military force sometimes had to be used. He wasn't against it. Your current party is. Terry Molesky asked you on CBC, if not, not ISIS, who would you bomb? You called that nonsensical. No, your position is nonsensical. Prime Minister Stephen Harper is being blasted for leading a government that you and others say just don't care about this issue. But his party is the only one in Parliament that advocates humanitarian aid for those in the ground, helping refugees get out and fighting the cause of the refugee problem itself. I'll get to facts on what Canada is doing on the humanitarian side in a minute, but first let's get Harper on the record here as well. Our message is also that we need to help people who are actually there and can't get away. And part of the way we need to help them is to stop the awful violence that is being directed at them, displacing them and killing them. Right. And I do not know how for the life of me. I do not know how for the life of me you look at that picture and you say, yeah, we want to help that family, but we want to walk away from the military coalition that's, that's trying to kill tens of, uh, from, the from the military mission that's trying to prevent ISIS from killing tens of millions of people. Right. I don't know how for the life of me you reach that kind of a conclusion. Exactly. We reach the conclusion that we 
we should be doing everything, we are doing everything, and we will do more of everything. That's our conclusion. I agree with him. How can you look at the picture of that little boy washed up on the beach and not want to fight the armies of mass murder that made him and his family refugees in the first place? Now, is it true, as the opposition and the media often say, that Canada is only doing a military mission, that we're not helping on the humanitarian side, that we're not sending humanitarian aid? Not at all. Now, this is a long quote, but it is important. It is directly from the website of the Foreign Affairs Department. You want to know what Canada is doing, what it has done? Here it is. Canada has been supporting humanitarian efforts in Syria and neighboring countries since the beginning of the conflict provoked by the regime of President Bashir al-Assad. Canada has allocated $503.5 million in humanitarian assistance funding, which includes support announced by Minister Christian Parity on January 7, 2015, and a contribution announced by Prime Minister Stephen Harper on January 24, 2014, while in Jordan. With Canada's support, relief items were distributed to more than 3.25 million people in Syria. Food assistance provided up to 4.16 million inside Syria. 16.5 million people were given access to clean water in Syria. With Canada's contribution, school materials were given to 162,000 children in Syria, and critical psychosocial support was provided to 20,000 children. In Jordan, 52,000 conflict-afflicted children and youth were able to get child-friendly spaces. 36,000 conflict-affected women and men provided awareness sessions on preventing and responding to violence, protection, referral, and sexual and gender-based violence. In Lebanon, Canada supported non-formal education to almost 10,000 conflict-affected conflict school-aged children. It goes on and on. But to Tom Mulcair and Justin Trudeau, it's all nothing. Could Canada do more? Could we be doing more? Sure. But so could each and every one of us. When the Vietnamese boat people needed help, it wasn't just the government that helped settle refugees. It was communities. I remember my church, my parish, raising money to sponsor refugees through the private refugee settlement system. We could all be doing that now. If you think the government isn't doing enough, what have you done to raise money for private sponsorships? Have you donated to aid groups? Have you joined a community group that will help a family settle here in Canada? Or are you just happy to complain that other people are not acting? If you can't support the fight against the barbarians making families like the Kurdis into refugees, if you can't do something to help settle those families, if all you can do is complain and whine that Stephen Harper doesn't do enough, then you don't really care. Not beyond using images of dead children as a political weapon.